Dr. Charles Bueller recently revealed a very intriguing electric drive on APEC, and it's based on an asymmetric capacitor design where the applied voltage creates an electric field, resulting in an electrostatic pressure force applied on the surface of the object. And in theory, with the right power source, it could revolutionize space travel. The devices themselves are very simple. They're basically capacitive plates encompassed in styrofoam. This has been done in many different shapes and sizes, so pretty much anything can go in this kind of setup. But testing it is a little bit more demanding as you need ultra high voltage, even up to 40,000 volts. And then on top of that, it is ideal to test this in a vacuum to eliminate ion wind effects. It would be dependent on the craft, but with 1G of constant acceleration, it could get a ship to Mars within a couple of days. The problem with this type of electric drive is that it seemingly violates Newton's third law of motion. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So naturally, there's a lot of criticism on whether or not this would actually work in space. You can have a solar sail, a hull thruster, or even a basic reaction rocket. But to have an electric drive without a propellant is pretty controversial. Now, there's a bit of a process to understand how this would work. First, it would have to be done in an artificial vacuum on Earth to see that there is no ion wind effects. The next step is obviously to have verification. Can this work at a different lab? And are these claims true? Now, Charles Bueller is a pretty reputable person. He is a research scientist in electrostatics. He has built many different variants to increase overall thrust. On top of that, him and Andrew have conducted many different tests in vacuum to verify the results. But what is perplexing about this device is the simplicity of it. Back in the 1920s, Thomas Brown discovered that a charged capacitor with high voltage would exhibit thrust in the direction of the positive electrode. For several years, he worked on these experiments, and this led to the Byfield Brown effect. Today, we see this in modern ion lifters. They typically consist of a thin wire and a larger foil skirt at the opposite polarity. The ionized air moves towards the smoother foil and bumps into neutral molecules on the way, transferring momentum to the neutral molecules. Inventors like Ethan Cross have taken this a step further, making self-sustainable and remote-controlled craft. But would this work in a space or even a vacuum for that matter? Well, there are contrary claims to say that it does, and even Brown thought that this could work in a vacuum. If that were true, then the conventional bifield Brown effect as we know it is not just producing ionic wind, it's doing something more than that. And this kind of revolves back to Bueller's work. Did he discover the same thing that Brown was speculating years ago in his own experiments? And it comes down to three definite possibilities. One is that there's some sort of local interference and it's a misreading. The second is that it does work in vacuums on Earth, and maybe it's somehow interacting with Earth's electromagnetic field. The third possibility is that this is a true propellantless drive that can actually work in space, and it could propel spacecraft to very fast velocities. As we go from each possibility, it becomes less likely. But having said that, other devices like the quantum drive also challenge this law. RVO claims that their quantum drive achieves 50 millinewtons of thrust from one watt of electricity. But this also means that it would have to be reliant on a different form of physics. And this is where quantized inertia comes in. It's a little bit beyond me, but basically what it's saying is that an imbalance exists as a pressure imposed by the direction of acceleration. And it could explain why galaxies are accelerating the way they do without the dark matter hypothesis. This theory of inertia was first proposed in 2007 by physicist Mike McCulloch. And naturally, the quantum drive was supposed to prove this theory correct. However, there has been a really speculative error in communication with the satellite. Maybe the government or interdimensional aliens destroyed it. But either way, we will not have the answer for quite a few more years now whether or not this is actually a device that works. So, in summary, we have to be critical of anything that is claimed to be a propellantless drive. And I don't think that's what Dr. Beeler is saying. He's just reporting his observations. And if it can be verified in a different lab, then there's might be something interesting going on with this type of propulsion system within Earth's field. 
I think it's a little bit more improbable that it would work in space, and I would be definitely worried if this type of electric drive is possible in space. The fastest spacecraft right now is the Parker Solar Probe, which is around 400,000 miles per hour. But an electric derived system powered by a nuclear reactor would be able to go for days, weeks, maybe months on end. And it would be able to shatter this record and maybe go into the millions of miles per hour. What worries me is that maybe we are going to see hypervelocity weapons in space. But then again, we are looking at the most improbable outcome of what this electric drive is possibly doing. On the contrary, if anything, I think it's more interesting that these asymmetrical capacitors can work on Earth without ion wind effects. Unlike a combustion engine or an electric motor, this type of electric drive may be possible to scale down to a micro or macro scale. And if that is possible, then it could be a game-changing technology like the transistor. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.